Hi everyone, welcome to today's reading lesson. I hope you have all been reading every day nonfiction books and uh, nonfiction articles on Freckle and wherever you can find them. Okay, there are plenty of places to find books and you should be reading. How long? Right, 30 minutes a day. So we've already learned that we need to talk the talk. We need to read to learn the lingo. Any book that we read, any topic, nonfiction topic, is going to have some special words. Some words for skateboarding, some words for hockey, some words for baking, some words for stamp collecting. Okay, so we're trying to learn the special words when we read about something. Okay, and we also said that before we read, we're going to try to make a list of the words we think we're going to see in a book. Well, today I want to show you a little bit more about what authors do to teach you, because they don't just write sentences. Okay, they, they add a lot of things to help you learn, because they want you to learn. So let's pluck a book out of our list here. And we'll start with one that we've already looked at quite a few times. So this book here, remember one of the features, one of the text features that the author uses is the tiger term. And this is great. When she uses a new word on a page, she makes a special box for us to get the definition. And on this page, you remember, it was camouflage and prey. So that's one thing that authors do. Okay, and then uh, we've already looked at this book here. And this one uses headings all the way up there at the top to tell us what to expect on the page. And we get the words that are written slightly differently. That way of printing is called italics. Okay, so that's this author's way of letting us know that we're looking at a new word. Of course, we get a caption to go along with the picture. All of these things are extra ways that the author is trying to get our attention. Look at the heading where it says territory. Those letters are big and bold. Okay, the caption goes with a picture. Okay, all of these ways the author is saying, hey, look at this. I want you to see this. Pay special attention to this. All right, let's look at another book on tigers. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Um, is this a nonfiction book? I don't think so. Okay, you know what? Let, let's forget about tigers. Let's just move on. Ah, yes, elephants. Elephants are good. Now, the author of this book really uses a lot of text features. Okay, here's the text itself. It says the elephant is the largest of all the living land mammals. Okay, but we don't want to just read that and move on. Look at all of the other information here. They're talking about the elephant's weight and its size. Well, here's a great way to do that. Show a picture of some weight. That's what those shapes are that I'm pointing to. Okay. And they compare elephants to other big animals, the hippopotamus and the rhinoceros. And they're even showing us a seesaw at the bottom. Okay. That's another way to make us understand, to help us understand that the elephant is heavier. And look over here, we get a did you know box. Oh, that's cool. Elephants can weigh the same as up to four safari jeeps. And they even show us a little jeep here. So we can imagine, easily imagine what it looks like. So look at all of these text features. And then the word mammals is bold. Okay, which means the author is saying, hey, you may not know this word. So I want you to pay extra attention to it. And then, look at that. Check out the words in bold in our glossary on the back page. I'm going to show you a glossary in a moment. Okay, so this author 
is saying, don't just read the one sentence I have here. Read all of the other information. I'm trying to get your attention because I want you to learn. So in this book here, Our Solar System, here you have a glossary. A glossary is a little dictionary of all the important words, and it's given usually at the back of a book. So let's say you're wondering about this word. Well, first, they're going to tell you how to say it, albedo. And then they're going to tell you what an albedo is, how reflective an object is, how much light it can reflect. So glossaries are very helpful tools. And a lot of the bigger nonfiction books have them. And you know, it doesn't just have to be in nonfiction books. You've all seen this before. This is our Scholastic News. And look what the Scholastic News does. They have silent and adaptations. Look what they did. They made the words bold. So those words don't just have black letters. They're much thicker. And they've highlighted the words. So there's a yellow box around them as well. The author saying, hey, look at these words. I need you to learn these words. Okay. Another thing the author does is she makes headings here. And headings are very useful because they break up the text. Can you imagine if those headings weren't here? It would be so difficult to separate all of the sentences and to find the information we're looking for. That's why in the Scholastic News, we have the read and think. It'll say, read owl wings, then stop, right? It, they're trying to get you to look at different sections piece by piece. Remember, don't eat the pizza in one big bite. Now, in our Science Weekly, here's what they do. They don't just describe cirrus, stratus, and cumulus clouds. That would be a little difficult to get an idea of what they look like. So, they describe them, but they also give us three really good pictures to make it easy for us. See what authors do? They try to give us as much help as they can so that we can understand what they're talking about. Boys and girls, look at this even in our math book. Have you noticed these things? They're all over the book. They're on most pages. So it says there, remember, you can show the same number in different ways. Well, that's pretty useful. So as you do your math, look at the extra things that are on there. Sometimes they'll mention their website. Sometimes they'll give you little hints. Sometimes they'll explain words. Okay, especially in the additional practice book. So boys and girls, I want you, before you read another new nonfiction book, go back and look at a nonfiction book you have already read and look for all of the text features that you might have missed. Go back and read the captions. Look at all of the charts. Check out the glossary. There are so many text features that I didn't even tell you about here. Okay, so... Our new, uh, our new thought for the day is look for and use features to help. Look for the glossary, headings, labels, captions, anything you can find. Okay? And that's it, boys and girls. Have a great day, and make sure you read a lot. The end.